right now I'm working on these large scale paintings that are influenced by um, Jean Baptiste Camille Corot. And there's a number of reasons why I chose that specific artist. Uh, one of the reasons I'm trying to produce the work is based on some criticism that I kind of heard uh, and read about that painter. Now, why I'm interested in the painter is that I think there's a bit of a crossover with this artist that goes into um, Impressionism and Post-Impressionism that no one really spends a lot of time with. Like, there's a lot of devices that he uses, almost like the pixels that I had in my earlier work, that, you know, I think there's this really incredible painting going on, but because of when the work was produced, it was produced kind of in this barbizon type fashion where, you know, these figures could be peasants, but they also have these, you know, floating cherubs and stuff like that, that, that he was criticized about is like, oh, you'd be a fantastic landscape paper, painter if you didn't include all these, these figures. So I made a conscious effort to remove the figures from the pieces and kind of focus on a brush work that I could see in his work. You know, I wanted to, to also be informed by technology with this work. So it's important that, you know, I source the material online and you know, by doing that, you see all these variations. If you just pick like one picture and you do a search for like, for instance, the lake, and you see all the color variations. So you have like, you know, 30 images up at one time, all the same thing, all having a different variation within it. So I think I wanted to sneakily make this a web project as well, where I, you know, would do this painting, like counterfeit the painting and try and sneak it into the lexicon of these Google searches for Corot. So mine pops up minus the figures. So it's obvious, you know, that it's that it's different, but it plays in with um, th this idea that, you know, there's knowledge somehow out there. You know, like I said, the, the internet appears to be a place of information, not knowledge. So I want to try and subvert that a little bit. Um, their larger scale in the original is just simply because uh, when people see these in real life, they, they I want them to have an experience with them where the brushstroke is more apparent and the um, the nuances of the piece are more on display because I, I really feel Crow has nuanced paintings that you just never get a chance to see. Um, some of the paintings I'm doing are from the Frick Collection in New York and there's, I think the Frick has four paintings. Um, two of them are in the director's office that the public doesn't get to see. So the only way you can see them is if you go to the gift shop and buy a postcard. So I did that. I tried to see the paintings in the office, was not able to do it. Um, so I bought the postcard and I decided to make my own paintings. So I've never seen them. I know they exist. But my experience with them is taking the information that I have of them and then, you know, internalizing that. And, you know, it's almost like the opposite of souvenir where you can buy this dollar postcard where you can go spend a month and a half making a painting. But for me, why I'm using Crow as well is it also represents this transitional time where, you know, being um, a European artist, a lot of his work was being bought by American kind of industrialist slash, you know, newly minted wealthy people that wanted to kind of legitimize themselves in society by having a European art collection. So uh, the quote goes something like this, you know, Crow produced 3,000 works in his life, 10,000 of which exist in the United States. So he's the most counterfeit artist of all time, if you believe those numbers. However, you go into the States, almost any museum has a Corot. Um, some of them are bound to be fake. So it's kind of a bit of a critique on the system as well. If I can sneak these Crows into, again, this knowledge, of Crow through kind of doing these web searches, but then also bringing into question the legitimacy of Crows that exist in institutions. Kind of where I'm at with it. At the same time, I want to make them um, about painting. You know, at the end of the day, why am I a painter? Because there's something about the material that we find interesting. There's something about uh, time and energy that gets put into something that we find compelling. So the fact that these are fairly large scale works, fairly involved with the duration of time, um, they're not meant to be a crow, they're meant to be inspired from, but kind of put back into that category for consideration. 